These are my two friends, Jaden and Kendall. They haven't really shot film that much in their lives, other than disposable point and shoot cameras and the like. So I'm hoping to give them an experience with my collectible cameras that are over 40 years old and are likely to break during this venture. Nevertheless, let's see which ones they choose. So it's been about two months since we recorded the video and after watching back the video, I realized that I did a craptastic job at explaining the individual cameras, their strengths and weaknesses and what they might come across while using them. Okay, so this is the Olympus Infinity Zoom 200, a very easy to use point and shoot, it has autofocus built in, you can zoom with it, and literally all you have to do is point and shoot, but that's also one of the biggest drawbacks of this camera. If you wanted to get intentional with a shot, you wouldn't be able to do it very well other than the built-in modes on top of the camera, like the auto, auto S, which is for taking portraits without getting red eye, flash off. You can use fill in for when your subject is backlit in a low light situation. And there's multi. Next up is the Canon A1. On this camera, you can shoot in fully automatic mode by selecting your aperture on this dial and using this selector to pick your shutter speed or you can set the camera to this green point on the camera lens and if you have this dial set to shutter speeds it will select its aperture for you or if you flip it over to the aperture dial it will select your shutter speeds for you and that takes a lot of the guesswork out of figuring out what shutter speed to use at which aperture and vice versa. On this camera, it also has an over and under exposure dial so that if your subject is backlit, it's also the only camera from the group that has detachable lenses. The only one. Next up is the Canonet QL17 G3. This is a rangefinder camera, which means uh, you do all of your composing through this uh, viewfinder, and then the lens is independent from that viewfinder. Rangefinder type cameras are a lot smaller because they don't have to fit a mirror behind the lens in order to redirect that image up to a viewfinder for you. You just get to look through this little lower quality probably lens that has borders in there for you. This camera does have a light meter built in. However, the mercury based batteries that powered this beast are no longer in production for good reason. Basically all of the focusing and exposing needed to be done manually in this camera. Finally, we have the Fujika Compact 35. This is, this is another rangefinder type camera. Uh, with much less creature comforts than a photographer might want. Uh, this did have light, a light meter in this honeycomb design light capturing photo cell right here. However, it is not battery operated. It's literally built for years and years and years, but once the uh, sensitivity runs out on this technology, uh, you lose the effectiveness of it forever. So not only does this camera require you to meter for yourself, but the focus on this camera does not adjust anything in the viewfinder for you to check focus. The only way to know if what you're shooting is in focus is by viewing the meter slash feet readings on the lens dial itself. If anyone had chosen this camera, I would have probably advised them to not use it. I haven't even used it yet, and I'm honestly super scared to do so, but maybe a video in the future, who knows? Jaden's gonna be picking first. I guess we just have, I have questions about how the camera works. I already know which one I want. Oh, I'll, I'll take it hard. 
I'm gonna take this one. Oh, good choice. That one's my favorite right now. Because it's so compact and it's it's got good image quality. Yeah. Um, good glass. Kendall, what do you choose? I choose this baby. Ooh, the Canon A1. Canon boys, huh? Yeah, you. Best printers there are, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Best printers there are. After making it to Essential Photo Supply, we messed around in the parking lot a little bit, and Kendall got very familiar with his Canon A1, figuring out that the lens cap is still on. <laughs> Once we got inside, Kendall was suggested some Cinestill 50D, which I think he was maybe a little too excited about. After much deliberation and checking the basement, Jaden landed on Cinestill 50D as well for its low ISO and competitive pricing. Okay. okay. And anything else for you? Oh, that's it. Okay, 1830. Jaden's a very smart person, and I have no doubt he could have figured this out on his own. However, my ramblings and incoherent mutterings probably caused him more confusion than they did help. Uh, however, Jaden loaded up the film just fine and ended up getting 38 shots out of this 36 count exposure roll. So go ahead and roll it. It's a primer. Go ahead and hit the shutter and then tilt it down. This will start dancing if the film is moving. So do it again? Yeah, do it again. So your film is moving through, that's good. Then you'll take another shot. Then if you look at the top, you will see the zero. So you have technically one more, but I wouldn't. I've, I think that's primed enough. I've loaded a couple rolls and I always get a couple extra shots. So you might get an extra shot. So we'll save it right there. The Canon A1 that Kendall was using is a little bit more difficult to load there's a couple more points of contact that need uh, secure fitting, otherwise the film won't load properly and even I couldn't explain the technique. All I know is how I've done it in the past and it even took me setting down the camera and using two hands to really get it in the right spot and load it up nicely. I want... Just uh, a picture of Jaden on the bench. Okay. Do it. Do it. Oh, did you wind it? Oh, no. Hurry, <laughs> wind it. He looks like Mario. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Mario. Dude, look at his eyes. He's wearing red too. <laughs> Do you ever feel awkward when uh, when you're taking pictures around the all, place? Yeah, all the time. I feel like I'm getting judged, even right now. Yeah, I totally felt that way. I'm just judging us for staying. And then there were people walking by when I was taking my picture. Yeah, did you hear the shutter on that? I heard it. It's really quiet. Did you get the composition you want? Uh, yes. How fast the speeds do you need to drive to me on your camera, this camera? Yes, yeah, so you can back up like you had it. Yeah, like that. Love it. Film bros. It looks beautiful. At first, I thought it would be alright that Jaden would use his phone to meter every single shot that he would take, but later I had compassion on him and I decided to teach him about the Sunny 16 rule, which basically allows you to guesstimate the exposure for your image based on the climate that you're in and the light values that you can anticipate during sunny, cloudy, or overcast situations. 16, because if you set your aperture to 16, 
your shutter speed will be at the reciprocal of your film sensitivity. So you have 50 speed film in there, right? So one over a 50th is what you could set your shutter speed to. And as long as your aperture's at 16, you'll get a perfectly exposed image. And the cool thing is, um, from there, you can just adjust the stops. So if you're at 16, um, the numbers on here are considered full stops. Okay. So if you went one, two, you could go one, two, and then you'd still have correct exposure. Okay. Next time we do this challenge, we'll have to do it in an open field so that if Kendall gets lost again, at least he'll be able to roam happy and free in the golden wheat fields of joy. I'm going to walk you through it using the Sunny 16. Okay. So we're in broad daylight. There's no clouds in the sky, right? Yeah. So if you set your aperture to f16. And it, so is this aperture? Or yes. Is so set aperture to 16. Um, and then you can shut your, set your shutter speed to the closest to 1 over 50. So you would do 1 60th. Um, and then let's say you wanted to get the maximum amount of depth of field. You would have to make it so that the shutter speed is faster. Okay. So adjust it up and then count how many stops you can go up on the shutter speed. Okay, so I can go up three. Uh -huh. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so if you tilt that over to 500, oh, wow. then on 16, the aperture, you can tilt that three stops over as well to five, six. Okay. And then you'll still have proper exposure based on the sunny 16. Okay, so I'm good to just go take the picture. Yep. Nice shot, Jaden. Okay, how many shots do you have? Uh, on your dial. You can see how many you've used. Eight. Okay, so you still have 28 shots left. Crap, only two 28? for me. <laughs> you only taken two shots? Crap, I'm kinda... I think I've taken three. Feeling sad that I've only got 28 shots left. You don't feel like you don't have a lot left? <laughs> yes, I feel sad. Should I just pull my film out and give it to you? Hey, I'm putting you on the news. In honor of Kendall running off and taking four pictures without us, I think this calls for an honorable Kendall slideshow. You gonna take a picture of the the bin? This is a cool spot. You can really isolate like the bin because it's so spacious. It looks so small. You could probably fit at least two bodies in there. It that is a small trash can. <laughs> this is a garbage video. Huh? Nice. Now that he's under the tree, like this way or step that out. Way? Step out into the sun. Ready? Okay. Should I eat it? Here, you got to do some some of that. Oh, that didn't help. To it, Kyler, or how? Because um, I see that you take pictures of like kind of old cars and stuff. 
Yeah. How do you normally how do you normally do that? Do you so, get the house in the background or you can you can kind of use a lot of images to t tell a story. Sometimes I start out kind of with a wide shot. So for shadows, I believe it's F8 at the reciprocal of your film speed. If you set that to F8, um, then you set this to 60, that's where you would get good exposure for the shadows. Okay. Um, so then you can do the same thing, tune it up to 100 to get it over farther, or you can take it there, you can so add one. So, you'd say like that? You could, yeah. So, how do I do it? And the in the auto mode well if if it's like more shady so a way that you could do this is to so it so let's let's say you want to shoot the shadow but you're worried the light is gonna interfere with the meter yes you can come to this dial right here okay and if you push that button in it's hard to do you can overexpose it by one stop that's one point one three but then it will be over by one stop beautiful <laughs> uh, not this wide angle one how do how do I say that I don't know why, you, I don't know how to say that. They, you want the 50 mil? Yeah. Trespassing on school property. Are we? I think it's fine. They can trespass us then, I don't see anyone here. Frantically flitting friend flees, frustratingly fueling my fervent confusion. Or in other words, Kendall was uh, running across the street and I didn't know why. Is this good lighting? Yeah. It turns out Kendall just wanted to take a cool picture of a square body truck. Well, because if I go side to side and up and down, I see differently. Yeah, and that's one of the things where it's nice to get your eye right up in there. Because everything that you do see through there is what you'll get. Ooh, I think you'll get the motorcycle in the background. No, I think I missed it. Oh.
watch out. I only partake of things with the letter G. Euro, Gatorade, Gushers. That's my average meal. Somewhere along the way, Kendall picked up a yerba mate drink from a 7-Eleven and it became the center of his photography for a little while. I'll have to ask Kendall if it was intentional putting the drink out of focus and the bridge in focus. Just to speed things up a little bit, let's just go through a rapid fire because at this point we were getting late into the day and we were rapid firing off a lot of shots. So let's get right into the shottery. Huge shout out to whoever's Monte Carlo this is because it was so fun to show my friends how I shoot classic cars. Just shoot through the door frame and get the steering wheel. Just the steering wheel? Like the gauge, like the speedometer too. We wrapped up the day by heading back to the same place that we bought our film from, Essential Photo Supply. And I showed the boys how to rewind the film and unload it, basically loading it in reverse order. If I had unlimited money and unlimited friends, I would continue to do this all the time because it was so fun to just run around and see what my friends take pictures of and what interests them. And I would love to do it again with Jaden and Kendall to see where their interests guide them. Just in case I don't put it in the title, thumbnail, or playlist description, this should be part one of a three-part series where the next two episodes I'll be going through the photos with Jaden and with Kendall to see what their thoughts are on their photos that they took their first time shooting film. So stay tuned for that. Tuned? Stay tuned. Tuned.